application, they are signing an open-ended cheque to the student loans company. For many, those loans are not enough, and so they have to take on part-time work to subsidise their university career. Others remain at home, avoiding this additional debt. Trying to find a creative outlet for mental health is vital. So I, my way of expressing my views, my opinions, sometimes comes through poetry and short stories. You crunch the words in your mouth, rock them back and forth between your teeth, roll them on the tip of your tongue, swallow them like chewing gum as the bitter taste lingers in your mouth. I'm the Deputy Director of Academic and Student Services at Brunel. Okay, and what did you develop here at Brunel? I wrote the Mental Health and Wellbeing Strategy for Students, which was launched last year. Can you, can you talk us through that? How did you actually put this into practice? How did you develop everything and then actually roll it out? Sure, we got a working group together, people who were interested, and tried to identify firstly what we already do on campus, then to pick out the gaps so that we could try and fill them. And then we got our senior managers to commit to um, put in their weight behind it, give it strategic importance, and we put a whole load of actions in there with an action plan, and now we've got to make people do the work. Okay. But loads has happened in the last nine months to work towards it already. Just as a candle can brighten even the darkest room, so can we brighten the lives of other people through our actions, our words and our thoughts. The human being is capable of so many wonderful things. Every day we see fantastic feats of strength. We see heartwarming shows of love. We see compassion. Yet how many of us truly know how to harness that power inside us? My favorite part uh, was the dance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely already full of energy before I went on stage, but okay. that was kind of like a release, a cherry on top oh, okay. uh, for the <laughs> evening. So I absolutely, yeah, loved it, enjoyed myself. <laughs> Remembered, like you know, you, it's something that's fun. It's it's a, it's a good way to actually uh, get across a very serious uh, message. Sixty-seven percent of universities do not provide access to NHS mental health specialists who can provide interventions on site. Thankfully, Brunel is not one of those universities, as we do have an NHS. Nurse. When people talk well-being, we sometimes think, oh, is it just people are going to talk to us about diet and healthy eating? <laughs> yeah. No. We dance, we do crazy <laughs> things, we do affirmations, <laughs> we have a lot of chats, and it's a lot more enjoyable because that's what well-being is all about. I think the university should be a place where you get prepared for life, for the good moments, just as well as for the bad ones. And really, I just want to be so thank you and be grateful for the fact that I'm a part of the uni that does exactly that. Wellbeing is really important because, I mean, it's looking after yourself and it, if you can't look after yourself, like, how can we then go on and, and look after others and, and, and the other community around us? Eventually, I'm very happy to say, what I held on to through all of that was this little tiny little voice inside of me that would say your life isn't meant to be this way and now imagine you know we talk about like negative thoughts and it was mentioned before as well imagine all these negative thoughts bombarding you or you're rubbish you're nothing you're not going to make it all these thoughts that i've kept having but i listen i decided to listen to the tiny little voice inside of me that's, that gave me hope and that voice was saying your life isn't meant to be this way things are going to change for you and i held on to that and that's what kept me searching for help. Sometimes it's just all about tapping into what gets you that strength. It's the strength that you were talking about in your, in your keynote. It's about listening to the voice that says you can do it and there's nothing to be afraid of. What I find really interesting is a lot of people have confidence. They can stand up and they can smile and they can almost put on a show. It takes someone very strong to be brave and that's that little voice saying, you know what, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it well. And I'm so proud of them. So it's really great to know that well-being and mindfulness is something that 
everyone's interested in. It's not just something that we are focusing on campus and working on. We definitely need more of these events around the universities, you know, the MHD challenge, I think it could be <laughs> taken globally. Um, yeah, it's just brilliant. One of the nice things about the um, enrichment programme, the life programmes, is that we draw from, we've got law lives, we've got creative lives, business life, the whole lot, bringing it together in the Arto Theatre as well, where we're working with the creative team, so the business schools met the creatives. Um, it's nice to bring that feeling of unity together. This event today has really given us an opportunity to showcase some of the skills and the personal growth that our students um, go through. And it's thanks to Audrey and her programmes and it's thanks to um, some great people at Renault University that are investing the time and are investing the funding into develop our students. We're quite dispersed. A lot of students stay at home now because they can't always afford to come out. It, it loses a lot of that feeling. So to get the opportunity to mix with different groups, different degrees and meet different people, you get a whole new perspective, but you also get a whole new support system. Wonderful. Audrey, thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. And we'll see Audrey again on our show very soon. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>